Well, hi everyone and greetings from Northern Michigan. This is Bob the Science Guy. You know, I've been gone for a couple of days trying to take care of some family stuff, dealing with my son's graduation and some work, but I wanted to come back with a bang. Now, many of us have heard the black swan mentioned by the Flat Earth, and that is a picture of two oil rigs off the California coast. Now, that has been done to death by the debunking community. Quite frankly, they don't know what a black swan is. That certainly wouldn't be one if they did. I would like to actually demonstrate a couple of true black swans. And these are black swans that completely invalidate the concept of a flat earth. One of which is this photograph right here taken from my backyard. But we're going to go over a couple of the other classic examples of flat earth black swans before we get to analyzing this one. So let's cue up the music and get going. Well, the first classic example we saw of a flat earth black swan was this photograph taken by Miles Davis up in Scotland. This is the Fourth River Bridge taken from a hill at 210 meters. Now the top of those bridge supports are also 210 meters. So in other words, the level of the camera is exactly the same as the level of the top of the bridge supports. The hills that are 90 kilometers or more in the background are between two and three times as high as those bridge supports, yet appear to be below them. This is a classic example of using real perspective to show that the surface of the earth in the 100 kilometers between miles and those hills is not flat. It is curving downward. Let me show you exactly the principle being demonstrated here. Now, the reason that perspective comes into play here is that when your eye level is at the same elevation as an object that you're sighting over, you can tell the elevation of a more distant object. If it's at the same level, like these three batteries, that will line up exactly. However, if your eye level is below, at, or above, the level of those two batteries in the front, it's very easy to see that that far battery is taller than the two closer to the eye. And this, of course, is the effect that's being demonstrated in this photograph from Miles Davis. Now, the evidence that destroys the idea that this could possibly be a flat plane between Mr. Davis and those mountains is the fact that his eye level is at exactly the same height as the tops of these bridge supports. If the surface of the earth between Mr. Davis and those mountains was based on a flat plane, those mountains would appear to be considerably above this dotted line. However, even though the mountains are two to three times higher than Mr. Davis, they appear to be below the dotted line. That is absolute confirmation that the surface of the earth between Mr. Davis and those mountains is curving downward as it gets further away from him. This view would be physically impossible if the surface of the earth was flat. Therefore, this is a black swan for the flat earth. Let's go ahead and have a look at another one, this time from a flat earther. Now the next black swan comes from J. Tolan Media One, and that's his famous infrared shot of Mount San Jacinto from Malibu, California, 123 miles away. And here we see it. Now if you look at this mountain, we can clearly identify a number of features. We can see this side shoulder, we can see the peak, we can see this saddle in here between the two mountains, and we can see the peak of the mountain on the right we can very clearly identify what part of this mountain we are seeing. This cross is located approximately 6,200 feet up the side of that mountain, yet it's right on the horizon. If you look carefully in the water, you can see the superimposed image of the mountain. So let's go ahead and see what's happening here. So here's the shot of the mountain as Jay Tolan sees it. Let's go ahead and take out the curve of the earth. That's what the mountain should actually look like if the earth was flat. But as the earth's surface is curved, we see what J. Tolan Media saw, not this view of the mountain. So notice that you see the peak of the mountain, you see the small hump along with this slide on the side of the mountain, and then as we go over we see the saddle and we see the side peaks. Now again, let's compare that to J. Tolan's photograph. 
And here we bring it in. Beautifully lines up. So that's black swan number two. But let's go ahead and go to my photograph and properly analyze it. Now, once again, you can tell that this is a globe earth photograph for a couple of reasons. First, it's in focus. Second, everything that we need to see is very clearly defined. So let's go ahead and establish the location for this shot, the distances, the angles, etc., and then go through the features one at a time. So let's go ahead and properly document the location of this photograph. The photograph itself was taken right here at the point of these two lines. Now this line is due east of the location where the photograph was taken, and this is geographic east 90 degrees. And as you can see, we have a small island in the lake here. We have a point of land out here. We have a little peninsula right here. And at this location, we have a dam going off to a little stream, and that's what formed this lake. Now, how do we know that these cardinal directions are correct? First of all, I measured them from Google Earth. Second of all, this line right here is a magnetic east-west line, and we can confirm that by moving out into this area and seeing that there's an airport there. This is runway 927, which is an east-west runway set up according to magnetic east and west. So, as you see, we follow along the edge of the runway and extend that out. And there is the magnetic east-west line. Magnetic deviation in my area is 6.5 degrees to the west, and that would confirm that that is approximately geographic east. Now, putting the Google Earth image up in the corner, let's identify the landmarks. Here is the island. Here is the point of land. That white object there is the dam. And here is the tip of the peninsula out here. So we can clearly line up our cardinal directions. That dam right there is due east of the location where this photograph was taken. And that is geographic east. That's where the sun rose at approximately 6.30 a.m. July 9th, 2020. And I took this from my backyard watching the sun come up. According to date and time, at Flint, Michigan, on the morning of July 9th, the sun came up at approximately 58 degrees. Due east is 90 degrees. There is absolutely no question whatsoever that that sunrise is occurring well north of east. Now the question becomes is where is the sun? Now we know that on Earth, the sun is directly overhead at 90 degrees at a point on the Earth between the Tropic of Cancer and the Tropic of Capricorn. The extent of the Tropic of Cancer is 23.7 degrees north latitude. That means that on the Earth, the point at which the sun is directly overhead is some 20 degrees south of the location where this picture was taken. Yet, the sun is to the north of me. This is simply impossible on a flat earth. It only occurs on a spherical earth and it's easily explainable on a spherical earth. Let me go ahead and show you. Now the first thing that I'm going to do is identify the location of Michigan on a globe. And then I'm going to take my pen and I'm going to indicate the direction of due east from Michigan. Now to see where the sun would be directly overhead, on a globe Earth, what we would do is go one quarter of the way around the Earth to the east and go to the Tropic of Cancer, which is approximately where the sun is this time of year, like so. And that would place the sun directly overhead at Benghazi, Libya. So we put our pen directly perpendicular to the surface of the Earth at Benghazi, and we go back to Michigan, and we realize that in order to point to the pen, we need to go up and to the northeast, which is exactly what we see with our sunrise. Now, if the sun is directly over Benghazi and it's a small and local sun, it'll be noon here at Benghazi. As we get further away, the sun, due to perspective, would become lower and lower in the sky until we got over here to Michigan, where it was right on the horizon and it was dawn. 
So what I'm going to do is I'm going to call this line, which is the distance from Benghazi, the circle of dawn. Everything outside that circle will be in darkness because the sun's not close enough to come up over the horizon. Everything inside the circle would be in sunlight. And the sun would be highest at the center of the circle here over Benghazi. So instead of having time zones that went around the Earth, we would have time zones based on where the sun is, with the sun being at 12 noon. And then as you got further away, it would get earlier and earlier in the day until you finally came out to the circle of dawn and the sun would come up. There's a little problem with that. Time zones in the world extend along the lines of longitude, which means that everywhere along this line of longitude, all the way down to South Africa here, it will be 12 noon when it's 12 noon in Benghazi. However, in South Africa, you would be very close to the circle of dawn, so it would be very early in the morning. And once you pass that circle, it would be nighttime, even though the clock said it was 12 noon. Now let's go see another little problem that we have. There's only a certain limit to how far this line can go south out towards the ice wall. That means that everything past the lowest point on this line will be in darkness. So for example, it would never be daylight in the Falkland Islands this time of year in July. I wonder if the sun came up at all in the Falkland Islands today. Let's go find out. So here's Stanley in the Falkland Islands. Now right now it's about 2.55 p.m. on July 10th here in Michigan. It's 3.55 p.m. July 10th in the Falkland Islands because they're just a little bit east of us. Now here's something that's kind of interesting. They had a sunrise to the northeast this morning as well, almost exactly the same as ours. We were 58 degrees, they're 54, but they're a little further east than we are. And their sun came up at 8.54 a.m. And tonight it will set at about 5 p.m to the northwest. That's hardly 24 hours of darkness, even though they're south of what I call the circle of dawn, which is how the sun would have to work on a flat earth if it was dawn here in Michigan and the sun was over Benghazi, Libya. So this is Bob the Science Guy signing out from northern Michigan, destroying one flat earth argument after another with ease. Please remember to hit like and subscribe on my channel. We have memberships. We have a Patreon. I even have a store that you can buy really cool stuff. So, until we talk again, this is Bob the Science Guy signing out. Take care.